2021 Mazda CX-30 Turbo Review As an independent company operating under just one brand, Mazda will probably never achieve the sales volume of its Japanese and Korean competitors. However, this relative rarity might actually work in Mazda's favor when combined with attractive styling, pleasant interiors, and enthusiast-approved driving dynamics. In the case of the CX-30, it all adds up to something that feels far more upmarket than its parentage would suggest. Starting at $35,275, including $1,225 destination, in flagship premium plus turbo trim, this particular CX-30 isn't exactly cheap, but it justifies the price with a torquey turbocharged engine, comfortable and well-appointed interior, and a long list of features. In fact, while the non-turbo Mazda is well-suited for rivals like the Kia Seltos and Toyota Corolla Cross, this particular vehicle punches higher, think of a budget-priced Audi Q3, and you'll be close. While it has a few flaws that merit reporting, the Mazda CX-30 Turbo is definitely a diamond in the commodity car rough. Design Mazda's exterior designers are some of the best in the business, and that shows with the CX-30. With a long front overhang, expansive hood, dramatically swept windshield, and stubby rear end, the CX-30 is a bit less conventionally pretty than the Mazda 6 sedan and CX-9 crossover, but it still merits a look back over your shoulder when walking away. Narrow headlights and a bold, shield-shaped grille tie the CX-30 in with the rest of the Mazda family, while pointed tail lamps recall the recently revealed Alfa Romeo Tonnale, a favorable comparison given Italy's appreciation for the visual arts. Part of the crossover's appeal comes from this tester's sole red crystal paint, which is the best $595 one could spend on an option sheet. Deep and lustrous in overcast skies, sole red comes alive in direct sunlight, refracting tinges of orange, yellow, and coral through both a traditional clear coat and a translucent pigmented layer, with millions of metal flakes residing in the base coat of paint. However, I wish there were more paintwork on the exterior, since hilariously outsized black plastic cladding dominates the CX-30's side profile. Instead of imparting a rugged mean to the crossover, these thick wheel arch extensions and rocker panels instead make the 18-inch wheels look puny and distract from the otherwise clean body side surfacing, the base CX-30 must look like a roller skate with its even smaller 16s. It's a disappointing misstep from a brand that generally knows how to edit its designs. Things get better indoors. The CX-30 Premium Plus comes in one colorway, consisting of classy black leather, and an unusual arrow of brownish-purple sweeping from the dash top to the door panels. Soft-touch materials coat much of the cabin, though the door panels and dash fascia are done in a material that feels almost papery on the surface before relenting to the padded stuff beneath. Still, the Mazda's classy three-dial instrument cluster, high-mounted infotainment display, and perfectly restrained use of aluminum trim impart a refined, premium appearance. The CX-30's materials are far more appealing than the plastic fantastic Kia Seltos and Volkswagen Taos, with a much more modern design than the Honda HR-V and Nissan Rogue Sport. Comfort. That veneer of luxury peels ever so slightly when driving the CX-30 down a bumpy road. A stiff suspension keeps body motions in check, but the trade-off is some ride harshness over potholes, concrete expansion joints, and cracks in the pavement. Some blame also goes to a torsion bar rear suspension, which is an engineering step backward from the multi-link rear end found in all-wheel drive versions of the Kia Seltos, Hyundai Kona, Toyota Corolla Cross, and Volkswagen Taos. Still, the CX-30 is a nice place to spend time thanks to supportive front seats, decently isolated road noises, and adequate ride quality over normal road surfaces. And surprisingly given its chop-top styling, the Mazda boasts a pretty spacious interior as well, with both rows of seats featuring above-average measurements that bear themselves out when loaded down with three or four passengers, although squeezing into the narrow rear doors is tricky. Once on board, none of us had much reason to complain, although the narrow windows and high belt line contribute to some claustrophobia, especially relative to the airy, spacious Volkswagen Taos. Unfortunately, cargo space is near the back of the class. Even with the seats down, my boyfriend and I struggled to get some flatpack furniture and housewares home from IKEA, 
The Kia Seltos SX Turbo I drove a couple years back solved a similar issue without protest. Technology. First, the good news. The Mazda CX-30's infotainment system is reasonably easy to intuit, even for first-time users. The software is attractive and responsive, and the 8.8-inch screen is mounted high on the dashboard and well within the driver's line of sight. Unfortunately, the side effect of its eyeline-friendly placement is a display that's too far away for a touchscreen to be conscionable, forcing inputs via a console-mounted rotary controller. Accustomed to smartphones as we all are, the omission of a touchscreen is a bit frustrating, especially when using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, both of which require a hard wire connection, by the way. Scrolling through my phone's mirrored apps was a frustrating experience, there was Google Maps right there, but instead of just tapping the tile, I had to click the dial one icon at a time. Going by the numbers, the 8.8-inch display is one of the larger options in the subcompact SUV segment, but Mazda's ultra-wide layout means CarPlay is limited to about 7 diagonal inches. Perhaps that's the price one must pay for the screen's stylish placement in the cabin. Worse still, Mazda only offers USB-A charging and data ports, a problem for anyone buying a brand new Pixel or iPhone. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.